the grade 7. This is your quarter 1, week 6. And we're going to tackle about arts. And for today's lesson, we are going to discuss the arts and craft of Central Luzon, famous architectural landmarks, and arts and crafts of highlands and lowlands of Luzon, particularly Calabarzon, its provinces Batangas, Quezon, Laguna, and Rizal. Before exploring the arts and crafts of Luzon, let's have a quick review about our previous lessons. Last time, we discussed about the arts and crafts of Ilocos Region, Cordillera Administrative Region, and Bicol Region. Arts and crafts are important means of expression, which communicate views, ideas, and feelings through the use of skills and imagination. These are important parts of our daily lives and can be found anywhere. In Ilocos region, some of the well-known artworks are Cali Crisologo, located in Vigan, which is considered the intramuros of the north, Inabel, a hand-weaving technique, and Burnay, an unglazed earthen jar with small opening. The popular artworks in Cordillera Administrative Region are Laba, a bowl-shaped basket made from Latan, and tattooing in Kalinga. Apuwangod is the last Mamba Batok or traditional Kalinga tattoo artists. Another popular artworks in Cordillera Administrative Region are Bulul, is a wooden sculpture that represents the rice granary spirits and amulets of the Ifugaos, which is also known as Lingling O or Tinumu. In Bicol region, among popular arts and crafts are baskets, bags, slippers, and coin purses. Now, let's find out the famous architectural landmarks in Olongapo, Sambales, Nueva Ecija, and Bataan. The Spanish Gate is one of the historic landmarks located in Olongapo City, Sambales. It was built in 1885. It faced the Spanish-era settlement of Olongapo and used to serve as the west gate of the armory of the town. It has tall walls made from locally quarried stones connected to the south gate that face the waterfront. Aside from as being used as an entrance and exit to the naval station, it was also used as jail during the Spanish and American occupations. The San Andres Apostol Parish Church of Masinloc, Zambales is known for the use of coral stones instead of adobe. It was founded by the Augustan Recollects in 1607. The front of the church is divided into triangular pediment two horizontal sections and three vertical cones. The left portion is extended to form the bell tower. The lower level contains the niches for saints. The second level has a rectangular window and curved niches of the patron saints. Curving of a medallion and other geometric shapes can be found in the pediment. The belfry is composed of circular columns topped by a lantern and a cross. Andrew the Apostle was an apostle of Jesus. He is the brother of Saint Peter. He is referred to as first cold. In the Gospel of Matthew chapter 4 verses 18 to 22 and in the Gospel of Mark chapter 1 verses 16 to 20, Simon Peter and Andrew were both called together to become disciples of Jesus and fishers of men. The parish of the three kings in Gapan City is one of the biggest and the oldest churches in Nueva Ecija. The Roman Catholic Church was built in 1800s. It has huge side doorways 
two standing portraits of their patron saints on both sides of the doorways, and a mural of the Holy Trinity on the ceiling, all of which are characteristics of a Western architecture. The patron saint is Divina Pastora, or Divine Shepherdess, is a figure of the Virgin Mary holding the child Jesus, with the sheep at her side and the three kings, who visited Jesus after his birth, giving gifts of gold, frankincense, and mirror. Abugay Church, or the St. Dominic de Guzman Parish Church, established in 1587 by the Dominicans, is an example of Renaissance architecture because of its vertically single or double divided columns and triangular pediments. It has five-layer bell tower ornamented with semicircular arched windows. Saint Dominic was a Castilian priest and founded the Dominican Order. He is the patron saint of astronomers. What is the main reason in building the churches in the Philippines? There was a conglomeration of factors that led to the presence of Baroque elements in the architecture of the Philippines, specifically in church architecture. During the Spanish colonial period way back 1521 to 1898, Spanish missionaries arrived, sharing not only their religion but also their architecture the Spaniards wished to create permanent, long-lasting churches as a testament to the power of God and did not consider the current church structures in the Philippines as proper places to worship. As most Spanish missionaries were not trained in architecture or engineering, the local townspeople, including Filipinos and Chinese migrants, alongside the Spanish friars would take part in the building and design of local churches. The combination of ideas from the missionaries and locals effectively fused native Spanish designs with a uniquely oriental style. The church aesthetic was also shaped by limited access to certain materials and the need to rebuild and adapt to natural disasters including fires and earthquakes, creating a style sometimes referred to as earthquake baroque. The churches display certain characteristics. Express a fortress structure such as thick walls and high facades that offer protection from marauders and natural disasters like earthquakes and alike. One of the prominent features of the churches is the presence of pediments. It is the triangular piece within the front of the classic structures. This is first used in Greek temples. It harmonizes the geometric shapes of the building and it is also an important structural element of the roof as well. The entire roof of Greek temples is like tents that has two pediments, one at the front and back. Calabarzon or Region A4 is formally known as Southern Tagalog Mainland. It is composed of five provinces that represents its name, Cavite, Laguna, Batangas, Rizal, and Quezon. It is not very far from Metro Manila and it provides variety of tourist spots like the Taal Volcano. It is famous from heritage towns to luxurious beach resort, to delicious delicacies, to folk arts and artists of the different places in the region. Arts and Craft of the Albatangas the Albatangas is famous for producing embroidered piña fabric made from the fiber of pineapple and woven into a costly fabric. These are used for piña barong, wedding gowns, and other formal attires. 
The burda or called calado is painstakingly made by three groups of people designer, the embroiderer, and the cutter. The most common motifs for their embroidery are leaves and flowers, which enhances the fine, smooth, and delicate qualities of the textile. The balisong is also known as the butterfly knife. Its name is derived from bali, the Filipino term for broken, and sungai which means horn. This is a type of knife that can be folded closed like a fan and comes in different sizes. Batangas is considered as the balisong capital of the Philippines. Batangueño blacksmiths have gained such renown for the quality of their workmanship that Hollywood producers employ them to create props for big budget films. The town of Lukban is famous for the Pahiyas Festival, celebrated on the 15th of May to honor San Isidro Labrador, the patron saint of farmers. During the festival, the townspeople decorate their houses with produced and colorful thin rice wafers called keeping. The keeping is made from ground glutinous rice that is thinly coated on a mature leaves and steamed over low fire. Laguna is lakeside province rich in natural resources and fertile soil for farming. It is the birthplace of our national hero and is famous for its hot springs and Mount Makiling. It is also known for its generation of skilled local artisans and curvers. Paete is one of the provinces in Laguna famous for its wood curvings from life-size statues of saints to miniature sculptures and wall hangings. Because of its fine and century artistry, they are declared as the wood carving capital of the Philippines in 2005. Angono is a first-class urban municipality in the province of Rizal. It is known to be the arts capital of the Philippines because it is a home to many of the country's greatest artists like Carlos Botong Francisco, a national artist for visual arts and famous for its murals. Another renowned artist and a true son of Angono are the Blanco family. Started by the prominent head of the family, Jose Blanco, followed by his seven children and his grandchildren. They are known in incorporating actual people in their paintings. Gigantes are big paper mache figures of human that represents farmers and fishermen. During the Spanish colonial period, the Gigantes was a symbol of agrarian protests. The locals paraded these Gigantes that represents the cruel Hacienderos to ridicule them. Today, the Gigantes have evolved. The Angono craftsmen starts producing images of local and national personalities, local myths and legends characters, and the original families composed of father, mother, and children. They are paraded during their town fiesta every 22nd and 23rd of November. Now, let's do this activity. You only have to identify the name of the church, year built, medium or material used, and distinct feature. Are you ready? Let's start! Let's see if your answers are correct. Activity 2. Bumorda sa paper plate. 
instead of tela o kaya ay yung mga papel, paper plate of course, scissors o gunting, pen or pencil, and of course yung needle. The yarn, any color of your choice, kung ano ang gusto niyong kulay. Panoorin niyo yung video para lalo niyong maintindihan. Hello, I'm Marley Bird, proud spokesperson for Red Heart Yarns, and I want to show you how to make these super cute paper plate weaving projects. For this project, you will need a skein of Red Heart Super Saver yarn. I'm using Red Heart Super Saver stripes in the example today. You need a small or a large paper plate, a pair of scissors, a pen or pencil, and a yarn needle. Once you have all the supplies, let's go ahead and jump in and learn how to make this awesome paper plate weaving project. To make the paper plate weaving project, we want to go ahead and take our paper plate and turn it upside down. Now you can freehand this portion or you could use a cookie cutter and trace out a shape, but I'm just going to do a very simple star shape on the back of my paper plate. This shape is what I will poke holes in and create the really cool string art on the front of the plate. Once you've traced your shape or drawn it, go ahead and take your yarn needle or your tapestry needle, pick up your plate and poke holes along the line that you just created, roughly about, a, let's see, a quarter of an inch apart or as far apart as you really want it to be. The object here is we're just trying to make nice little holes in the actual plate so that way we can weave our yarn through those holes and create the cool string art on the opposite side. As you're poking holes along your diagram, make sure that you're very careful not to accidentally poke your hand on the opposite side of the plate. Once you've punched all the holes around your shape, you can go ahead and flip it over and you can see how the shape is going to look on the opposite side of your plate. Pretty neat, right? Now let's go ahead and thread some yarn onto the same needle we used to puncture holes in the plate. When using the yarn, you want to have maybe 72 inches or more um, as far as length of yarn to be able to go in and out through all of the holes that you punched in. And you can use any sort of super saver you wish. I just happen to like this super saver stripes. Once you thread the yarn through your tapestry needle, Go ahead and going from the underneath side, pick a point and thread the yarn needle up through that point and pull it up just to the point where the yarn has a little bit of slack left over so that we can tie that in. Now go ahead and going to the opposite side of the plate or going back and forth, whatever way you want to, go ahead and start putting the yarn through all of the holes you've just created. I think I'm going to go ahead and go down here. This is a part where you really just get to have some fun. Do anything you want as far as where you want to put your needle in, where do you want to place your strand that goes across. It's totally up to you. Um, maybe I'll go over here to this one. Let's see what I can create. If you thread your string all the way through the holes and there's a couple blank spots you don't like, feel free to go through the hole once again. When your shape is all filled in, go ahead and turn the plate back around. Grab the end you started with and go ahead and snip any excess off from the string that you did not use. Then go ahead and just tie these two bits together in a nice knot to secure them in place. Snip off the extra tail and you have a really cute and fun little string art project. You can do this with variegated yarn to get some really cool color effects. You could use a solid color and then go back and kind of weave through the solid color to get a different look. Or once again, just use some more of the variegated. Ito naman sa ating Activity 3, 
We call it as Gigantes in a Battle. This activity will give you a chance to experience doing a paper mache. Ano ba yung paper mache? Ito yung pinagpatong-patong na papel eh. At the same time, designing your own miniature gigantes. Kayo ang mag-iisip ng sarili niyong design. Ano mga kailangan? Or what are the materials to be used? Of course, you have a plastic bottle, a stone, o bato, a newspaper strips. Yun yung mga pinagputol-putol na newspaper. And of course, yung small wire. Ang mga nipis lang na nalambre kasi kakalanganin yun. Plus, yung glue. Of course, kasi ipipaste nyo yun eh. Magpapaste ka na magpapaste bawat layer ng papel and acrylic paint na bibili yan sa mga hardware or poster color for designing and of course yung paint brush okay panoorin niyo yung video at para may lalo niyo maintindihan okay
remember the famous architectural landmarks in Oronga Po, Sambales, and Nueva Ecija plus Bataan. Okay, number one, the Spanish Gate is one of the historic landmarks located in Oronga Po City, Sambales. It was built in 1885. Number two, the San Andres Apostol Paris Church of Masinloc, Sambales. It is known for the use of coral stones instead of number three, the Paris, one of the three kings in Japan city, is one of the biggest and the oldest churches in Nueva Ecija. And number four, a Bukay church of the Saint Dominic de Guzman Paris Church. It was established in 1587 by the Dominicans. It's an example of Renaissance architecture because of its vertically single or double divided columns and triangular pediments. Now, for your check your understanding, you are going to answer the following questions based on your understanding of the lesson in famous architectural landmarks in Central Luzon. So this is the last part of our lesson. See you next week class. Goodbye.